Happy Friday, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful week and is ready for a weekend and make the most of it. I'm excited that it is Friday and I have a whole weekend to relax, hang out, enjoy for myself. And I get to start it with you here on Twitch. So, thank you for joining me. If you don't know, I am Jaybird the Word, and I run Play Games Spread Joy, where I hope everyone feels welcome, included, and heard at the table. Now, here on Play Games Spread Joy with Jaybird the Word, I like to play games, show off games at the table. Either you can play along with me or tell me some of the moves I'll be making. I'll be showing off new old games, new to me games. So, uh, in the future, I hope to have guests of some of some to play together. Occasionally, I co-host with other people. And then, of course, Friday nights here, I hang out with chat. We just talk about whatever we want. And I open a few new to me games. Sometimes they're brand new. Sometimes they're a few years old, depending on how long I've had them or when I receive them. But yeah, that's kind of what, I, what it's all about. So on Mondays at 8 p.m., I play games for about an hour and a half, two hours. Always tabletop style games. Fridays at 6 p.m. is where we have Unboxing of the Week. Tuesday night, I join the Charity Board Gamer at 9 p.m. Eastern, where we play a D&D 5e style game called Dauber's Quest for the Key. That is a whole world inspired and come up with by our DM, uh, Daryl of Splattered Inc. Gaming, and eventually the whole campaign with the storyline will be coming to Kickstarter. So we're playing, playing through it to show it off before the Kickstarter. We're also raising money for a charity during that Thursday night. I also join Chris, the charity board gamer, for other games. Typically, we'll do like stuff on table, Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, and occasionally we'll do Zoom-style games as well, like Werewolf and... or... Um, which blank slate, stuff like that, where people can have like a pen and paper and show it on screen. And then this Wednesday, I actually had the pleasure of joining Jess underscore CCG of Chicks Can Game, where we played Cartographers, which is one of my favorite flip and right, roll and right style games. And we got to play that and show it off on stream. It was actually, that game is actually one of the first ones I showed off on stream by myself, which I'm thinking I'm doing again soon. So pay attention and join me when you can. But yeah, so we're just going to be hanging out today, chatting along opening a few games. Today's all about expansions, expanding our world of gaming. So I'll have, I'll show them off on camera in a few minutes, but every choice I have to unbox today is going to be an expansion, of primarily well-known games. I just have not opened the expansion yet for them. So typically with gaming, I like to a first experience the main game first for what it was originally designed for. And then I will slowly add expansions, decide which ones need to stay with the game, or that I don't actually need. I'm one to, because as you can see, I have a lot of games already on the shelf, only so much shelf space left. Expansions typically get unpacked and put into the main game box. And there's only so much room for expansions in some game boxes, so sometimes I have to limit myself to, do I keep this one, or do I want the next one? Or can I stuff them all together? And then, eventually, hopefully, I'll take some of the extra boxes I can't fit on the shelf, make wall art out of them, such as framing the face of the box, putting them up, or I'll do collages and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different options you can do for board game, tabletop decorating. So I got some music going. I don't know how well it can be heard. If you want it louder, you can tell me. I'll turn it up a little bit, but hopefully it's not too loud so you can still hear me. But you can still enjoy it in the background as well. So last night uh, when I joined the charity board gamer for his after the show uh, tabletop simulator game stream, we got to play Fall of the Mountain King. 
which is coming to Kickstarter June 1st. And this is a kind of a, an area control style influence game where it follows up the storyline from Hall of the Mountain King where goblins are attacking and you're trying to like you, you basically know that the goblins will overtake the whole board by the end of the game. So your goal is to accumulate the most points by either attacking them back or controlling certain areas of the board or influencing certain champions to come in. Well, so we played with Kids Splaining, which has a wonderful YouTube channel. They also do pictures on Instagram. They have two wonderful boys that kind of go over the games and do unboxings and, and then Daniel and Allison, the parents, have started an additional add-on series to that, explaining different uh, gaming mechanics such as what is deck building, um, and then some of the, like the special words kind of like orthogonally adjacent, which is a word that in the board game industry a lot of or hobby a lot of people use and know, but if you're new to gaming, you may not understand what they mean. So they've been doing a series on different words like that on what those mean so it's easier to get into the hobby and understand what a lot of gamers that have been used to those words are saying and how they use them not saying that if you don't know the word you're not a gamer there are all sorts of gamers i grew up playing cliches like monopoly clue dominoes cards and then right out of college met some friends that introduced me to Catan and dominion kind of the deeper mechanics i guess you could call it more somewhat euro style gaming and then opened my eyes to the hobby itself and how extensive the hobby is because for the most part the majority of games you find at walmart they've started to have more of the hobby games but they used to focus on the mainstream big conglomerate companies versus a lot of the hobby games come from small industry companies that maybe run with one or two people out of their own home they go to conventions have maybe two or three games for their whole company at a booth of course there's bigger companies that have done a lot more games now but last year alone there was 5,000 plus games released into the market even during a pandemic and then years before that even more and so there's no way to know all the games know everything that's coming out but there's still so much to explore so that's part of the fun of what i'm doing friday nights is i do have i'm fortunate enough to be able to afford to buy games and enjoy the hobby along with doing videos like this i can show off games for different companies potentially so i can show them off to you you can decide if the component quality is something you're interested in if the theme is something you like when I play a game, if you like how the game play works, if you like the player counts, I might talk about the age that says on the box and if that seems typical for the type of game it is or if maybe the game age range is set up purely because of component sizes. For uh, Some games have a higher age rating just because it purely has small parts and not all companies can afford to go through rigorous extra testing for the younger age markets that's, that they sometimes require. So some odd random facts that it might say like 14 plus and the next step down might be 10 plus and then it might be 8 or 6 plus but the farther you go down the more rigorous the testing becomes from choking hazard pieces to how difficult is the gameplay to oh uh, kind of the thematic is it is it a theme that is something kids can handle is it too mature even though the artwork may or may not be is the theme itself and how it's integrated how is that applied to to the age range so occasionally I'll, I'll hit some of those points depending on how much I know about the game of course depending if it's newer if I've been able to research it or not what I've been told about it some of that comes into play so of course even when I'm previewing, there's going to be some opinions that pop up. But I will always do what I can to implicitly state, this is what I think. This is the obvious what I'm showing you. 
this is kind of a fact statement versus this is a very subjective type statement because too often in our even in the hobby and outside of the hobby that subjective and objective get mismatched mixed up and misunderstood and so I, I try to be clear about it like very infrequently will I do a favorite game because they're all good for their own reasons I might have a top 5 top 10 list but I can't say one game is my top favorite game almost ever but because it depends on who I play with and and that is part of the, my point of playing games and spreading joy because each person I play with I need I want to help feel included and welcome at the table and you may not enjoy the same game the next person enjoys so if you're not enjoying the game I will have a harder time enjoying it but if they enjoy it I can play it with them later and then enjoy it for its own time there so to an extent a lot of times when you ask if I'm asked what type of games I enjoy or who I enjoy them with it's I enjoy this type of game with this person this type with this person and then overall that's the subjective part of it objectively I can talk about component quality is this chipboard or cardboard something that will tear easily is it thick is it thin of course is it a good insert is it already seem to be falling apart when I open the box is it too much waste area in the box there's some boxes that are way too big for the game too small for the game uh, did it come with a decent storage option I know some people want all ziplocs some people want uh, thermoformed inserts that are plastic and have space for every little piece but does everyone want that so that all affects us differently so I can't sit here and say you must buy this game I will say I've enjoyed it if you like this type of game you might want to buy it if the price is right for you but don't just go spend all your money pick and choose what games fit you so with that we're going to move over and look at the games I'm going to be able to open tonight and you can help me choose. Now, whenever I do this, I have about 45 minutes to an hour to open things, so whatever we have time for. So there's no guarantee we'll open all this tonight. It'll go back into the rotation of things that I can open at a, another stream time. So let me switch over there. Let's see what we got. Ah, that one's a little too small. This one's going to look a little bit better. So like I talked about, it's all about expansions tonight first off the well-known Everdell looks really cool to see set up on a table because it's a 3d tree pieces sit on it Pearlbrook is one of the expansions I don't know much about it um, but I do know Everdell I've really enjoyed that game the artwork style has, has cards has little components for resource tracking Kingdom Rush this will have some 3D plastic miniatures that have been printed. It typically has uh, some cardboard chits of different shapes and sizes. It will have uh, different cards with for the characters. Uh, let's see, Dead of Winter, Warring Colonies. I've played Dead of Winter several years ago. It's been a while, but it's all about su surviving in the Dead of Winter with zombies. So the theming is a little bit darker with blood and gore. Root, the asymmetrical game where everyone plays a different uh, forced creature race. Uh, and they're trying to gain control of, of the force itself. Uh, this expansion, the Underworld, does will add a couple of more of those races. And we can see which ones it adds to that. We have uh, Terraforming Mars, Turmoil, which I believe this one is from a Kickstarter expansion I do not know much about it came came to me in part of a trade for other games and then of course we got Sagrada Passion it's gonna be add some dice some cards now Sagrada is one one of my favorite dice games it is on the simpler side of the types of dice games I enjoy so I uh, it is below probably what my favorite dice placement game is which was role player both play in a similar way but role player adds a lot more theming and a lot more decision making and, and kind of manipulation to the game which I enjoy Sagrada definitely is lighter it's a very vibrant 
but slightly more abstract in that it's just a stained glass window. So, of course, all of these are somewhat well-known games. The expansions themselves may not be as well-known to each to everyone else. Uh, the Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is the Spider Goddess expansion. Let me turn this for you to be able to see. So now you should be able to see the name of that expansion. So, I may have time to even co open a couple of these tonight. Now, if you are in chat, let me know if there's something you want to see. Otherwise, I'll just pick one and move on from there. And then hopefully, whatever I open, I have a chance to actually get to the table soon and play with the core game and at some point give you my opinion on the change and what that expansion adds to the game. And considering I will be primarily play solo based games on stream that I can show off in a solo mode of some sort, I will probably pick one of the solo based options right now since no one is speaking up, but that's not a problem. So I know Sagrada, I've played solo, so I'm going to set that aside as an option. I do know that Terraforming Mars has a solo mode. It has That's going to be a lot of card based and possibly some components for resources. Root, I know that is two to six players, so it's not as critical for me to open yet until I can start gaming in person, which hopefully will be, be happening sooner than later as I will be able, able to get my second shot uh, this weekend. So very soon I'll be able to start playing in person with a lot more people in the area. Okay, so war, uh, Dead One Warren Colonies, I believe, is still... Yep, that's actually 4 to 11 players, so I'll be setting that aside. That's definitely been a while before I can play that one. Uh, Everdell, I bl believe, is just 2 plus players. Oh, this is actually a 1 to 4 player game. I was mistaken on that, so that might not be a bad option. Very great artwork, of course. And then Kingdom Rush, Spider Goddess, uh, 1 to 4 players, so definitely a fun option to see. And it will ha would have a lot of miniatures. I think I'm going to open Sagrada first, because I know that's near the top of my list of games I really enjoy, and something I am more likely to be able to play on stream soon for you. And then if we have time, we will have time. But it won't be if, it, we will have time to play, to open more. I'll do another one of these games, and see who else shows up and has a vote. And of course, as I move the games, I get to show off one of my favorite things I I've recently received, just a few weeks back, my neoprene playmat with, as you can see, the slogan of Play Games Spread Joy. And hopefully at some point I can start taking these gaming mats to friend's house or game night somewhere else so everyone can see, hey, at this table we are playing games, but we're also spreading joy as we play. So, we got Sagrada Passion right here. So I'm going to switch over. I also have a detail view. So some of these smaller things come out. I can show off what it is. So this is going to have to be cut open. Now I don't know what the typical price is going to be at a store near you. But if there is a local friendly game store that you're able to support, I would look into going there if you can afford to. I know not everyone can afford to go to a local game store either from distance or because the prices are sometimes more uh, depending on what your budget is I know a lot of people still buy on Amazon which I when I'm able I go to a local game store when I can find what I'm looking for I'll go uh, depending on how fast I want the game at what price I can currently afford but when able, friendly local game stores. Uh, now, of course, I can't say every local game store is going to be a friendly local game store. And some may deservedly not should be supported depending on their view and how they treat everyone there. So if they're not a game store that is helping spread joy in some way to everyone and being inclusive, they're not truly friendly. Are they worth supporting? That is up to you. I can't tell you not to shop where you don't want to shop or where you do want to shop and vice versa. But when able, support local. Now, 
we have our Sagrada Passion. So we'll do a quick look at the back of the box. So if you know what Sagrada is, it is a dice drafting and window crafting game where you're using dice, drafting them, and basically taking your turn to pick a dice and put it in your stained glass window. There are certain rules on which colors and which numbers can go next to each other. And by the end of the game, you're trying to completely fill it and then score based on the cards that are in play for that game. So this expansion. So let's do a little bit of reading on it because it does have a little tidbit on the back. So Sagrada Passion. Return to the famous Sagrada Familia Cathedral in Sagrada Passion. The first of the three Great Facades expansions. This modular expansion revels in artistic freedom. Add everything inside or hand-picked individual components to enhance your crafting experience. So Sagrada Passion introduces new challenges to test your artisanal abilities. Gain individual player powers through inspiration cards. Use rare glass dice to complete new private objectives and be rewarded for carefully meeting new symmetry and balance public objectives. Will your stained glass window be a true masterpiece? So the contents uh, inside that we'll be looking for is six rare glass boards, six rare glass dice, six public objectives, seven private objectives, and six inspiration cards. So and on the box, just so you know, and I'll be just reiterating that this expansion is not a standalone. You would need the base game to be able to enjoy this expansion. And this expansion says one to four players in about 30 to 45 minutes, ages 10 and up. So I do find that that playtime is very accurate. Once you know how to play the game, it can play easily in 30 to 45 minutes. That age range is primarily because the dice in this are not standard sized dice, but instead they are quite a bit smaller. So we'll keep that in mind. So first off, we have a very small booklet, but easy enough to read. Very easy to read lettering. Details what you're finding in the box. Kind of goes over what's new. Uh, the different modular modules, the setup that this adds, how it, how it changes the game, the difference in it, very clear example of how that's applied, the new dice, the objectives and how they score, and then of course credits. I'll put that right here. I do apologize. This detail camera is a little bit darker. I need to work on getting the lighting adjusted in that, but it's not bad at the moment. So we have a small deck of cards, cellophane wrapped. Let's do a quick check up close if it has a quick release. Uh, if you've been here before with me, you know that a quick release tear away on card decks is always the preferred option as you don't have to take a knife and risk cutting the cards as you cut the cellophane. Now unfortunately I do not see any quick tear away so I will have to pull out my knife and do this. Uh, so it is slightly loose enough on this edge I can get under it point it away from the card material but that is still something I prefer not to see. Okay, let me get this plastic off, and then we'll take a look at these cards. There we go. I'm going to set that to the side, that to the side. Okay. Well, let's look at the back real quick. So, very colorful artwork. You're used to this style if you've played the original Sagrada. So, we got different. We got a gray back. And now we also have a almost rainbow like kind of the light going away from the dice with green on the back. Now in the this card right here, these cards are going to be new. 
because I do know that these are not in the original game. But this gray back is, is something that you will find in the original game. And the blue back as well is very similar to the original game, if not exactly the same. I believe one is the private, one is the public objective style cards. So let's look at what those cards are. And I'll leave the other new deck to the side for now. So it looks like we have a, yeah, so the, the monotone gray dice back. These are private objectives. And it does look, so all of these, well, if I turn it the way, so that is definitely some new styles of the objectives. Now it does look like the majority of these have a special color die and that at some point on it that probably deals with the special glass die that comes in the game. Now I don't know if it was the way these were packaged or how long it's been packaged. There's a very, very minor warp to these cards already. So if you look right here, they are rocking. So there's almost a corner to corner curvature in the card itself. Now, will that affect gameplay? Not at all. Typically, while playing the game, the cards lay face up on the table or face down next to you. You're not constantly holding these in your hand. So as far as that, that is not a big deal if you find a deck that way for this game. So these scoring cards, you sc you'll score points at the end of the game based on more, majority of these are going to be numbers or colors in a certain location within your window. These are all new. I, it's hard to compare them to what's in the original game without having that out right now. But the, like you can see the artwork is on par if not better in the main game and then of course we have some of the public objective cards now this these do look like a new mechanic in that they these arrow systems I'll have to look into the rules how that applies because that is not something I've seen in the base game yet where it's pointing arrows between two sets And then this entwined diagonal links, that's definitely new as well. So it's definitely going to be interesting to try out these scoring objectives in the game. That will definitely affect how you play and which color dice you, you choose and what, how you place your numbers. Because typically um, you might just have something that's a row across or, or your column or or certain color anywhere on the board. So very strict placements of both colors and numbers or a combo could make it a very unique challenge when you start playing which could help me like the game a little bit more make it closer to why I like role player because there's a lot more manipulation and scoring options so let's take a look at what these new cards are going to look like oh wow I want to show these off. Again, apologies, it's a little bit darker. Um, you can see how bright that is, but I want you to see the detail on this. Look at how much detail they've put. So this is all representative of a stained glass window. So that's the way they've done the artwork, even though it's almost like a wood grain background and, and like a cutting board or, or of some sort just the way they've made it look like a stained glass window still is very cool and that these are fully colored and are no longer just a grid out it's very interesting so these are inspiration cards so like it looks like additional abilities for the game for a player so like this first one is at the beginning of the game lose one favor token and once per round using a tool only costs you one favor token 
favor tokens or something you spend during the game to do special actions. And then we have luck. That one's really cool. It actually looks like it's re-rolling the dice. And then we got courage. Which, reading the rule on that one, I, I can see they may have struggled to figure, figure out the right picture for that because I don't necessarily see myself how that picture correlates to the rule. And then we got some influence. Now, as I lay these out, I do really like how the background of these art styles all line up. If you look that straight line, it's almost, yeah, if you look close enough, they took the same stained glass template for the middle line and the outer exact same lines. And then just the dice style is shifted around. But yeah, that background, you can see how consistently the same those lines are right there and right there but what I also like is if I remember correctly this has this represents the, all the main colors you will find in the actual game for dice because I know for sure they're blue they're green they're yellow there's orange trying to well, it closely represents, because I know there was red dice, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I played. Well, I played on stream, but I don't have it out every day. But yes, the artwork style is very intriguing. I really like it. And just seeing that this is going to add extra mechanics to the game, extra scoring options, extra player abilities, is going to make this game infinitely more replayable and give it more depth than it had before, which I'm going to really enjoy. So let's look at these dice. So I see six dice. Ooh. Hard to tell how well, the, they're almost a pearl essent. Kind of smoky, not quite clear. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to really show on strength on camera just how cool those look. And as you can see, these are really small dice. Like these cards, standard playing size card, and they fit on the card that easily. Uh, yeah, I don't have any standard die. Uh, no, I do. I think I have a regular die right here. What will happen when you're a dice ball, then you have a random dice laying around. So here is a regular D6 die. Just I had laying around. And you can see the difference in size. To of the dice. So this small die is the size of all the dice you'll find in Sagrada and, it, and if it, any expansion has a dice in it, it'll come with that size, as far as I know. So that is the primary reason I believe the age range is set where it's at for this game, which we said was 10 plus, which isn't bad. I know kids younger than 10 that can easily play Sagrada. And of course, don't have an issue with the dice. They're a choking hazard if, you get, if they get too young. I can understand, but you have responsible kids, they could easily play. And then last, but definitely not least, we have, looks like some cardboard player boards. Okay, so these were in a, let me switch the view back so y'all can see it better. This right here, bottom of the box, had the 
like the resealable stick, double, like sticky plastic. In theory, you could put it back. As soon as I opened it, it ripped the side of that edge. Now, some people would want to keep that. So if that's something that would bother you, keep that in mind. I probably won't need it because I'll probably find a way to get these into the main play box. So the, these are, uh, let's see, six of these boards that have like special abilities on them. Kind of shows you an example how, of the text it talks about, which is always great in this game. Like most cards and everything have text and an example shown right on it. So you don't often have to pull the rule book out to verify anything. But as I look closer, these are actually punch boards in a sense that they have some spaces on them that dice fit. Okay, first off, those punch very nicely. So it took one finger, pushed it centered, they came out very, very clean, no tearing. Uh, no visible tab edges. A very clean, very tight tolerance cut that did not leave any issues. And it's kind of cool that these punch pieces have the artwork on them, even though they will not be needed and end up in the trash, likely. Or I'll add them to the, the, the what did I punch pile of random chipboard to make a collage one day. So yeah, that punched very easily. So this one only has one in it. Yeah, you can see how fast and easily that punched. There's very few games that have punched that punched that easily. Yeah, you just took a thumb to punch out. Sometimes you have to like put extra support in the corner so it doesn't tear it. These don't need that. Very nice thick punch board. Probably about three millimeter thick. Eh. Maybe not three millimeter. It may be at least two though. But yeah, you're not you're not going to easily bend that on accident. It's gonna take some some work. It actually feels like the box itself is thinner cardboard. We have oh the the artwork on the back of these is really cool too. So these are kind of like the the main player boards in the game that you have stacked up the side. Now the, the main game has it's almost like a it's not quite more it's more than double thick because it has a thin layer you can slide a card inside of. But they do have the upper layer is punched through for a die slot. And so it'll be interesting to see how these are integrated into the game. Are they player for each player or are they in the middle of the board? Yeah, a nice small expansion to a very vibrant, beautiful game. So, I'm going to pack that away real quick. And then I will be getting, sometime this weekend, I'll probably get that game out, get it, fit it into the main box, try out the game itself, and then hopefully at some point show off the game here on the stream. But I do like a nice simple expansion that's that doesn't add too much to the game but it expands on the core principle of the game without changing it too much some games are like okay you get a whole new player board you get all this all these different rules this is like okay this is adding a layer as opposed to making it a different game itself okay so that was Sagrada Passion so next up you know what, let's go with Everdell Pearl Brook, knowing that this also has a one player option that I might be able to show off on stream at some point. Very beautiful artwork, of course. And it being a frog, not everyone knows, but I went to TCU. I was a horned frog, or a horned lizard, sometimes known as that. One of the creatures that can shoot blood from the corner of its eyes when it feels threatened and used as a form of defense. 
and so kind of I'm a frog for life and so frog on the cover it's hard not to choose it at this point so Everdell Pearl Brook um, deep below the shimmering surface of the Pearl Brook River a mysterious civilization of water folk is waiting so we talk, it talks about one to four players 60 to 90 minute game ages 14 and up in this so the game plan list is definitely harder than Sagrada. I'm sure that 14 plus could actually be down a little bit um, if you have the right kids. I, I can I know, I've heard of 10 year olds easily playing this game. So again, this is an expansion uh, that requires the Everdell base game to be able to play it. So keep in mind if you like what you're seeing here and you want to play with this, make sure you have the base game. Uh, it does talk about the components you're going to find right in the box, which is always very nice and useful, especially when you're buying an expansion, so you can see the difference in what it's actually adding to the game. Because I know some big expansion boxes that only add a few cards, but then you get a, and I've seen some small ones that pack it full of components. So it's, it's nice to know what you're getting into. And it also talks about what this actually adds to the game, like the river. So the Pearl Book introduces a new sideboard, the river board where you'll send your frog ambassador to gather a new resource pearls that's why it's called pearl brook they'll also encounter new aquatic critters and constructions those are going to be cards within the deck that you you can uh, add to your add to your player your acquire during the game collect enough pearls and you can construct fabulous windows and or adornments to make your city the pride of everdell it's time to take the plunge indeed so let's take the plunge i'm going to plunge my knife into the edge of this plastic of course I'm not trying to cut the board at all Ooh. come on cut i probably need to sharpen my knife at some point it does look like so this is another one of those games i picked up in a trade from someone along with some other games and then so I'm trying to tell if it was the plastic or if it's the box that looked like it was had some damage. There may just be some slight scratches in the box. It was more the plastic. This corner over here started to look a little off. I think light hitting the plastic in the wrong way from scratches messed it up. Not a problem. But if you've played Everdell, you know that this has some beautiful artwork um, from Sterling Games. And then artwork by Andrew B. Uh, Bosley. So, if you've seen the game being played on tabletop, it has this very cool 3D tree that different cards and stuff get placed on throughout the game. And so, just the table presence alone. But then, some people say, okay, is that too much? Is it just a gimmick? Is it needed? Maybe not. But what I do feel is the gameplay and the, the play style of the game hold up. So some games have gimmicks where it draws you to the table and then you're like, oh, this game isn't that great. This game is enjoyable and looks great. Okay, first off, box top off, we have our rules of play. Of course, what would it be without rules? That's what we always need and look for. Nice clean cover is very nice, so it doesn't it doesn't em, uh, burn in you with too much at the very beginning. So it has a nice overview and adds to, more to their story. If you play the original Ever Everdell, it, they have a little bit of story in the rule book, kind of like where you are, what you're doing, and like a little bit about the creatures. So this adds to that story. Uh, straight up gives you contents which again I really appreciate when I know exactly what I'm getting so then I can verify all the components are there or later after I've opened things in mixed games hey I want to add this expansion or only this I can separate things back out so we're going to be adding some frog ambassadors some otter tokens which is kind of cool you don't see otters in many games uh, the river board and overlays some the pearl pieces, wonders, cards. 
So it talks about how you set it up. And this setup is in addition to the base game. So the very first thing is follow the setup rules for the base game and then do this. So it's not going to have all the base rules in this booklet. Don't expect it to. So it talks about the river, the different ty the types of cards it's adding, what the adornments are, wonders and pearls, and then solo rules. So I'll definitely be reading into those later as I've been playing a lot more solo during the pandemic and, of course, here on stream. Which, having solo rules that is only one page long means they didn't have to change much for the solo game. Unfortunately, I did play a game recently that the solo game was completely different than the, ba than the regular game. And to me, felt like they shouldn't have made a solo version or had solo rules because like you lost the whole like crunch of the mechanic there was a deck building game where you collected a lot of stuff used them during the game like most deck builders but you go to play the solo game there's no deck building it's basically shuffle all the cards you would have bought or just basically everything don't use these few cards shuffle everything and it turned it into a very standard and bland solitaire flip these cards decide to play them or not flip three cards like classic solitaire like you can only play a certain card on top of another one and you're trying to just stack them right and get lucky enough in your draws it was like this isn't worth playing but solo rules that are this short means the base game Integrity is still there, so I very look forward to that. Okay, and this is kind of cool. They have a little catalog of their games. So this is the Starling Games catalog for spring 2019. So that does show when this game came out, or this expansion was back in 20, 2019, a couple years ago. Or it may have been end of 2019 to 2020 and they came out with this because it was the most recent catalog i may be wrong why it's in there but they have some very interesting cool games from alien frontiers archmage black orchestra everdell of course which this is the expansion to king's forge nothing personal shadow rift and of course, they probably have a website that this sends you to, too. I can look up some of that later if I want to know more. We want to look at the expansion. First off, so we've looked at the rules. Now we got some... The game board, which goes next to the main game board. Now, for an expansion board that goes next to another board, this is sizable. So, that is what bare minimum eight inches there to there so this right here is 16 plus inches across and then about six inches thick as it goes around so the more expansions you add to this game the more table space you'll need so keep that in mind if this is a type of game you enjoy or want to try have a table space ready So there's that board and then under that we have so that, that's your standard uh, game board style thickness about I would say about two millimeter very clean art linen finish uh, more cardstock style right here and we have a couple of these I'd have to look into the rules of where they get used and how they get used. So I don't know if they go on top of this board, next to the board. So we have one small punch board with four pieces on it. A quick look before I try to punch, see if there's a risk of tearing. It does look like some of the laser cutting or punch cutting that they used may not be fully through, so hopefully none of this tears. No guarantee. I may just be seeing things of 
So it's not a quick tear. So when we're punching the other game, you know how it pops out. This is not popping out. Okay, so that took quite a bit of extra pressure. Now granted there are special cuts in these, so that may be holding it in. Okay, so that's one piece out. That does have a bit of a tab. You can see, you might be able to see the edge of that tab. Uh, so if I can get it on camera, it may not focus. But there's a small tab edge right there, which is inside these two as well. So that's what's holding it in, preventing it from snapping right out as easily. Now, granted, you can you saw right there, it's not tearing at all, which is fortunate. And I've had ones that look this bad and tear completely, and then ones that just never tear. So I do like, it's most likely the glue they used is keeping this together better. See how well this, if you can hear the snap. So pretty clean. I do like the sound of that though. So not not the crispest of snaps out of that last one, but it did come out pretty cleanly. And you got one board. This also is the same, about the same thickness as the game board itself. So that's what you can expect for the cardboard. Now we got, so first a small, albeit thin, small deck of cards, regular size cards. Quick look, I can already see the quick release. Wonderful. So, if you look at a deck like this, especially if you see a gold or a colored line coming across inside the plastic like this, you will highly likely find a quick release tear tab. A lot of times it's gonna be on the side edge. Let's see if I can help show it in the light. A little bit harder to see, but those, as long as you can get a nail around it, you pick up that tab, pull and pull, the plastic top comes off and they slide right out, no knife needed, which is wonderful. Okay, so let's see what kind of cards we got. So first off we have the Pro Brook. That all went swimmingly. I just came out on top playing Everdell Pearlberg. So if you win the game, like some of these games now come with like these cards as kind of like, hey, take a picture with this card and post it online to kind of show you played it and show you won. It's one of those types of cards. And then make a splash on the back. Uh, take a selfie with the other side of this card and share it with us. And so, of course, like I just talked about, it has their social media accounts where you can share it, tag them if you get first on that card. So let's look at the backs of the cards first. So if you've played the main game, you'll recognize this artwork right here. Kind of looking over Everdell, the, the badger and the mouse. So this is gonna be a lot of the cards that, that add into the middle of the table that can be acquired during the game and added to your own little city. Let's take a quick look at what we got. So we have some, we have bridge. We have a ferry with a new looks like lily pad, river pad type spot, which does look like it's out here as well. We have a harbor. We have oh, we've added some pirate ships. Well, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for the raid. Thank you, the game cupboard. And welcome, everyone. I am Jaybird the Word, and I run Play Games Spread Joy. Welcome to Unboxing the Week on my uh, Friday night, where I hang out with chat and I unbox games. Tonight, I am unboxing some expansions. Currently, I have Everdell Pearlbrook I'm unboxing on the table. So thank you for the follow. Thank you for the raid. And welcome into chat. I hope everyone has had a wonderful week. 
and wonderful Friday. Yes, indeed. Thank you for the follow. And I really appreciate it because these these last few followers, I'm like just a couple away from hitting affiliate and hitting that goal. So y'all are edging me that much closer to hitting the goal of affiliate where I can help everyone have channel points so, so they can help vote on the games I'm opening up and do some more special things on stream with everyone. So thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. So tell me about your week. How y'all are how you're doing, what you've been playing, or what your plans for the weekend are. Woo! Yes indeed, yay indeed. Game cover raid. I really appreciate it. And how are you today, the game covered? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It, it wouldn't be without the help of other streamers like you that help raid in and bring other viewership and and kind of hang out and bring the encouragement that really make it all worth it. It's it's everyone that comes into chat. Yes, thank you indeed. We're playing Chronicles of Crime tonight. Were you playing the original Chronicles of Crime or were you playing one of the newer versions like 1400 or 1900? Because um, I have the original, and I also have 1900, which I still need my, to do my review for. You're on the same followers as me. Well, maybe I need to help you out, too. Let me go check out your channel, and I can give you a follow, too. I like to share the love back. So there. Gave you a follow. Hopefully I can help you out just just as much as you're helping me. So what game is it? So I'm showing off Everdell Pearlbrook, which is an expansion. Um, I'm, I was just unboxing it tonight. Um, so that's what I do on Friday nights. I hang out with chat and I unbox games that are at least new to me. So tonight was all about expansions. Earlier I unboxed Sagrada Passion. And now I'm looking at the components for Everdell Pearlbrook. And so what I was actually just doing is going through all the different new cards. So, of course, if you have any questions about what you see, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to go over anything. I try to talk about the quality if I can, the artwork. Can I say, I'll tell you what it says if there's anything unique about it. So a while ago, I, there's a small punch board that have a couple of components on it. They have a few small tabs on the back of them, but they all punch very cleanly, very nicely, no tearing. So that's something, the quality of the punch board was really nice. So we're talking, this actually added pirate ships um, because we have all this water space now. So it's interesting to see what kind of water themed things they're adding to the game. Next up we have a messenger it's one of those lizards that's running on water, which is kind of cool to see. And then we have some fairy ferrets. They're, spe they're special if you have at least two of the pearls, gain two coins. So something about the pearl book, it actually adds pearl pieces, which I'll open up in a second and show a little bit more detail on. We have shipwright. It almost looks like they're building an ark with how big the boat looks for that. And then we have, because there's pirate ships, we actually need a pirate. So looks like we have our pirates right here, which they are platypus. Interesting, the animal they choose to be pirates. And then, of course, you always need more judges in the game. Always good for scoring. And then a new card back that's new to this expansion because it looks kind of like the water. Very clear. Which, let me make this a little bit easier for y'all to see. So y'all can see the cards now a little bit easier. This is really vibrant artwork. So we have an artist. Bosley the artist. We have... Christina the Constable, or 
underwater snail. We have Illuminor the Inventor. Uh, we have an eel. Snout the Explorer. We have Omicron the Elder. And we have Gus the Gardener. He's actually swimming around with like a garden tool. We have our water mill. An observatory. A ballroom. The market. Gardens. And our great hall underwater. So, this is all about expanding into the water, having water uh, creatures and, and water places to add to your city. And underwater, you're going to find the pearls. The, so these have kind of a, a pink pearlescent hue to them. Uh, the nice thing is, even though they're rounded, they all have a flat bottom, so they're not going to go rolling off your table, which is really helpful. Because I think the main issue, like, even though they're rubber, the berries in the main game of this, I found, do roll around a lot. So, these are nice and smooth, but they have a flat bottom, so they're not going to roll off your table. Oh, yeah, they're... I agree, they are very pretty. Oop. And as I say, they won't roll off your table. One rolled off my table. But that was more my fault in the way I tried to grab a giant handful of them. But that is what I get for speaking up and saying that would not happen. I jinxed myself. Okay, and next up we have our new frog pieces. So everyone, so each player in the game, because I believe the from the original game these are the player colors, adds your frog ambassador. Nice solid wood. Nice tall too. About one and a half inches tall. Oh, and there's another one. And then this expansion also adds otter meeples. So a different race to play as instead of, what was it, the rabbits and the turtles. We now have otters. And then last, but definitely not least, we have our small deck of cards. This is in you know, the, the sticky side envelope, clear envelope style, that can reseal itself. So if one of these, the tree backed cards, and this is an evening of fireworks achievement. And then we got some new cards. First off, that undersea Great Hall look on the back of the cards just looks phenomenal. Really makes it stand out. Let's see what type of stuff we have on here. The mask. As soon as I flipped that over, I thought that I thought it looked more like an owl, but then I looked closer. Yeah, it definitely looks like a mask. So that's a really cool artwork style they've added to that. And then it's using pearls as a resource i believe to pay for them or to gain them i'd have to it's been a while since i played everdell and i've not looked fully at the rules for this expansion yet so i might be wrong in how the pearls used for the card but if you've played if you know more about it you can tell me we have the bell the key to the city nice who wants the key to the city what would you do with the key? The sundial. 
a tiara. The hourglass. The gilded book. And a compass. So you always know where you're going. And then, last but not least, this also has a plastic insert inside this box. Place for cards, components, and extra form space here. Let me see if some of these fit in here somehow. I'm not sure if they're supposed to lay in here a certain way. Unless they just go down here. Yeah, the nice thing is it shouldn't rattle around too much once packed away. Which I always enjoy when it has a nice insert, but likely what I'll do with this game, like I do with most of my games, I try to put my expansions in the main game box so they travel easier. Because I do like, when it's safe to do so, I like to travel and take my games to either friends' houses or conventions when I'm going. So having the option to condense a game is my preference. I'm going to pack this up real quick. And my time is running short as I have other things I unfortunately have to do tonight. Um, that's why Friday nights are typically a little bit shorter. I typically start at 6 p.m. Eastern time and then go for about an hour or so hanging out because then I have a playtesting event I always help out with with weird giraffe games um, we, so I help out in their discord we do basically des designers of all sorts and levels can bring their games to play online we typically use tabletop simulator try out the game kind of a lot of times it's breaking the game say hey this rule worked this rule didn't try something else and we'll come back next week with new iterations so i get to go run that so i'll have to wrap up tonight but what we'll do i'll switch over ah. Ooh, that was nice fitting box when you get that kind of box fart um so let me switch over to this right here I realize that's upside down. Let's fix that for y'all. And that should be a... Oh, no. Now it's backwards. There we go. Now that's backwards. Or fixed, so it's not backwards anymore. So, yes. Thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you for the raid. Uh, the game cupboard. And thank you for those who followed. Gets me that much closer to the goal for affiliate and I hope for the rest of you who are streaming or on your way to affiliate if you're there and if you're working on it that you get there soon as well so what I'm going to do I'm going to find someone else to raid so we can again share the love forward um, so if you bear with me a moment let me see who's online unless there's someone that you want to suggest for me to raid you can do that as well I'm always looking to find new people to follow and spread the spread the joy to. Let's see who's on right now. You know what? It looks like Panic Panic Games is playing Forbidden Desert solo. Uh, with doesn't have many people on right now, but we can spread the joy to him and uh, uh, to them and bring some more follow. Uh, watchers to them right now so if you want to stick around and help me raid them that would be amazing and then thank you for showing up tonight i hope everyone has a wonderful evening wonderful weekend let me try to get this raid okay raid at So, thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you for the follows. And as always, play games and spread joy.